What is going on, everybody, and welcome to your source for fantasy hockey news and breakdowns, the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Mock draft season has arrived, baby, and we're diving into it on the Wednesday episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's get this paper. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Today, it is the mock draft time. Steel, should I be doing this now, or should we be doing it right when we kick off? It doesn't really matter because the takeaways on today's episode are all about the mock draft. So thank you for joining us for the Wednesday episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. This is your source for fantasy hockey news. And thank you for making us your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL or enter promo code locked on NHL for a free water bottle with any order. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Steel, this is our first mock draft. We're about to kick it off. We're going to do it here live on air in under a minute. It can get intense. Are you excited? Because we know <laughs> hockey season is near, baby. It is near. I'm very excited. This is a 10-man league mock draft we're doing right now. Flip in the fourth position. I am in the eighth position. Got two centermen, two left wing, two right wing, four defensive spot, and two goalie spots as well. It's going to be a short mock draft, but we're going to give you all the highlights and all the players that Flip and I are targeting. Mm -hmm. The draft is now loading up. We will be entering into the mock draft very, very soon. Looks like we got a a couple of other uh, players in this mock draft as well, two bots, but... Uh, yes, two centermen, two left wingers, two yep. right wing positions, four defensemen, and two goalies. It's going to be one of those short, uh, lower end mock drafts with only mm-hmm. 10 teams in this league. Yep. And we are underway with the first overall pick for team one. And of course, it's most likely going to be Connor McDavid. Yeah, it's got to be. I think this is an interesting angle here too, Steel, because yeah, we're seeing a couple of auto drafts here with bots but you can almost guarantee there's that one guy or gal in your friend group who is probably going to be on the auto draft as well. If not another, people are busy these days, Steel. So this is actually an interesting angle to expect. The draft is going to start in two minutes. So we have a second to just preamble here, Steel. And I think it's quite clear if anyone goes other one, two, than Dreisaitl and McDavid, (laughs) I think we're both questioning what's happening here. But after that, David Pasternak, Nathan McKinnon, Matthew Kachuk. There's some interesting names here. And then I'd say in that next tier after that, Robocop, Rantanen, Tage Thompson, Brady Kachuk, of course, Austin Matthews. This first round, I think this year, aside from the first two picks steal, it could really go a number of ways. It can go a number of ways. And it is interesting to see the the slight difference uh, from the mm. expert preseason ranks and then just the rank based on league settings. Uh, yeah. Nathan McKinnon on the expert rankings at number four, but he goes all the way up to number two on the ranks uh, on the ranks based on league settings. So again, right. slight variations to top it off, but very exciting to see what players get drafted after Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl because those have to be the number two guys taken no matter what. I totally agree. This is one... One of the things you and I learned last year by doing these kind of baptism by fire on air mock draft situations is we feel the same pressure getting our comments off, getting our analysis off that some GMs (laughs) at home who don't do this as much have that same pressure about picking the right player. And, you know, if you're not watching on YouTube, we'll do our best to break this down for you. Shout out to all our listeners on all platforms. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Head over to YouTube if you do want to watch these mock drafts live. Steele and I will be doing mock draft Mondays the rest of September, all the way in the lead up to the puck drop on this upcoming season. So make sure you're tapped in right here. Draft's about to start, Steele. We're going to fire off a couple of picks. Me in the four spot here. This is a bit of a spot where I think I could take a number of different guys. So we'll see what shakes out here in a second. And there we go. The first two guys off the board, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. What else to expect? But yeah, it'd be very interesting to see who you choose with your pick. As of right now, Austin Matthews going third. Don't hate that whatsoever. Uh, Who are you thinking about right now? So if Matthew Kachuk wasn't hurt, you know how much I love this guy and how much he fills out all those peripherals. But I think you're going to see a bit of a come up from 
the Colorado Avalanche. So I'm going to go with Nathan McKinnon. I think you have to go with Nathan McKinnon there. Uh, You know, David Pasternak falling down to five. I don't hate that as well. But Mm -hmm. yeah, Nathan McKinnon, number four. I have the number four pick in my draft in my other league. That is a 16-team league. But I would be taking Nathan McKinnon uh, at number four if he is there still available. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, again, it's debatable who you want to take, number three, number four, and number five. But if Nathan McKinnon is there at number four, I'm snatching him up right away. Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, peripheral categories, I mentioned, this guy plays with edge and a bit of snot as well. You're on the board, steal 28 seconds, Kucherov, Robertson, Rantanen, and others. Who are you thinking? Well, yeah, I'll make my pick very quickly, but I want to ask you a question about Tage Thompson going number six and how you feel about that number. This is interesting. This is very, very interesting. (laughs) I think I'm going to be going with Nikita Kucherov over here. Just a fire, just a powerhouse forward for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Just so much to love about his game. 30 goals, 83 assists uh in last year's season great power play specialist a ton of shots and then again if he 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 was healthy last year so if he remains healthy he is one of that top 10 uh picks i think you took kucherov in our listener league last year did you not i think i did uh yeah you did no i think i think i think i took vasilevsky actually okay i thought it was a tampa bay lightning you're on the board again though steel and i do like that pick you can't go wrong with the tampa bay lightning's core six they're gonna be nasty do I take your boy Jack Hughes with the 13th overall pick? I'm afraid not. I'm actually going to go down to Kale McCarr, who's just a specialist on the blue line. You know, maybe yeah. I can make a trade with you into this mock draft <laughs> as well, or future in this fake mock draft right now. But I'm going to draft Kale McCarr as my first defenseman. And then there's, you know, again, Kucherov and McCarr to start with is not a is not a bad way to start things. No, and this is one of those spots where if you are, this is a more of a shallow league, right? We're kind of lucky here. There's a embarrassment of riches, if you will, steal for us <laughs> in the first few rounds at least. But that might actually make it more difficult. There, you got to have the blinders on. You're gonna also have to get lucky. You and I talk about this all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can do all the planning you want. You can do all the research you want. But when it shakes down to it. There's a little bit of luck involved, just like anything where you're wagering a bit of cash. I'm on the board in one pick, and I have my eyes locked on a player that if he's off the board, it's going to get a little interesting for me here. But we'll juggle <laughs> in a second here, Steel. Before we, we, before we get to your pick, though. Makar, Hughes, and then Sorokin. First goalie off the board, Steel, a little early. What are your thoughts on that one? Right after I take my pick, I'll, let's get your thoughts on that. Sidney Crosby was taken. That was the player I was going to go after. <laughs> So I got Ovechkin here. I got Marner here. And then I got a bunch of elite goaltenders. I like the draft strategy of waiting a little bit steel for that goaltender. You and yes. I have talked about that a little yes, bit. We have. So I'm going to go with a guy who's a hundred point threat every year in Mitch Marner. Yeah, I think that's a great pick as well at number 17. Uh, unfortunate that you, you, you know, someone snagged your boy, Sidney Crosby, right there. I've got my eyes on yeah. someone as well, and hopefully he still remains when it gets back to my turn. He probably won't. He most likely I, won't be. Yeah. Um, wow. Picks are just firing off the board right now. But I want to go back to that number six pick, Tage Thompson at number hmm. six. How Do you think that's way too high for him or a little bit too high? Because I know I he's, it's, he's definitely an early second round, in my opinion. I think it's a little too high because I would like to get him right after maybe that first big batch of superstars. Yeah, as he's starting to cement himself in that kind of conversation, I'm not sure if I'm fully ready to put that moniker on him fully. So I did want to go after Sid. He got sniped. I got Willie Nylander, Zabanejad, Braden Point, and a guy that I've talked a whole lot about, and I think you're starting to come around on him, Steele, a little bit. Yep. I don't mind going after another center and getting that position out of the way now. I'm going with Elias Pettersson because I expect a big year from him. Yeah, I expected you to pick him as well in this round, Thank round you. three. The fact that Elias Pettersson fell all the way to round three is a little bit surprising to me. But I've got someone on my mind as well. I've got I'm, I'm four picks away from my my third round pick. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we're early on in this draft, and again, this is one of those drafts where if you're in a smaller league, uh, ten teams only. And there he goes, Braden Point. That was my guy. I wanted to pair him up with my okay. boy over there. Nikita I like Kuzov, that. But I like the pairing angle, Steele. I like where you were thinking. I, you, you you know how I feel about those yep. pairing angles. I really like trying to pair at least a forward and a defenseman on my team. I was going to try to get yeah. Braden Point there because they play on the same line with Nikita Kucherov. At this point, you know, there's also Steven Stamkos. There's also Steven Stamkos I can pair with. I got five seconds left, but I'm actually going to go with a left winger, Timmy Stutzla, another one of your boys. Another one of your boys that you really like. 
Great pick at thir- in the third round. 39 goals, 51 assists last year. The shots, the hits, they continue to climb up those ladder, uh, the leaderboards as well in the peripheral stats. Um, but yeah, I've got one left winger, one right winger, Timmy Stutzla, Nikita Kucherov, and Kale McCarr. I'm two picks away from my fourth round pick here. Steven Samkos, John Tavart, Ryan Nugent Hopkins going 29th overall. Too early. That's too early. That was one of your faders, wasn't it? It was that only was because it was such a big year last year. You're on the board, though. I'll explain that take in a second. I think I'm going to pick my goalie at this position. Connor Hellebuck, an absolute stud. I'm not really, again, I don't think the Winnipeg Jets are going to be a playoff team, but he is one of the best goaltenders in the fantasy league right now. Top three yeah. goaltenders in fantasy points the last four seasons. So love Connor Hellebuck and the fact that I can get him in the fourth in the fourth round. He's one of those gamer steal. And now that I'm starting to fill out, you'll see what I do here in a second. I'm going to address my blue line. I like spreading out my picks. I don't really want to have to load up at one position all at once in one time. That's how I approach these. I like getting a little bit of all of my lineup. All a little variety. Variety, variety, baby. That's what we're about here. There's a number of different ways that you have to take this. Steal like certain things. I like certain things. Find a little combination of everything that you think works for you and employ those strategies. Yeah. Rasmus Dahlin filled out the peripheral categories last year, Steel, and I think you're going to see him take his game to another level, and you're going to like that for your Buffalo Sabres take. So I'm going to go with <laughs> Rasmus Dahlin here, right where I think he should be taken, Steel, near the 40th or so draft choice. Yeah, an absolute beast. Probably one of those up and comers for the on the blue line right now with a lot of young defensemen. Really blossomed last year and um, continues continues to get better and better every single season. I'm very excited about the Buffalo Sabers, and I know yeah, there's not are. a you know there's not a ton of faith in Devin Levi heading into the season. Uh, and if he has that, uh, you know, if he's ready for that NHL starting position for the Sabers, mm-hmm. but I believe he is. And uh, you know, a yep. couple of other people's who uh, a couple of other people who watch our podcast as well believe in Devin Levi and the Sabres as well it's true it's true and it's just one of those things that sample size and a lack of track record have me wanting him to just perform because a lot of people want to throw titles on young players they want to cement them as pieces you gotta like what this guy's done though at every level he does seem to have all the pieces to be an elite level pick I'm back up here in the fifth round steal we're in the third pick of this round so i have the fourth pick in the fifth round and i'm gonna go to a goaltender as well because as much as i'm ready to employ the strategy of letting goaltenders fall i don't want to let them fall too far and i'm gonna go to a guy that i know you're gonna like i'm just high on him i think he steps out and establishes himself as a true number one it might be a little bit of a reach but this is why we're doing it baby give me philip (laughs) gustin Wow, I'm actually very surprised you went with Philip Gustafson. Yep. I didn't think, uh, I did not think that you were going to be going with Philip Gustafson. Let's see what type of goalies. UC Soros, Jeremy Swain, and Vitek Vanacek. You know what? I don't hate the pick, actually, with some of these Soros goalies. would have been the only other guy I would have really Soros considered. Would, I think I would have taken Soros a little bit ahead uh, yep. of Philip Gustafson, but I don't hate the pick with all the goalies that have already been taken off the board here. Logan Thompson available. Uh, mm-hmm. Stuart Skinner still available. Tristan Jari, Darcy yeah. Kemper. Uh, Jonas Corposalo. There's a lot of goaltenders still on the list. We're only in the fifth round right now. I am now on the clock. Roman Yossi, Adrian Kempe, and Alex Tuck went 45, 46, and 47th. I absolutely love that for myself because yep. I'm going back to my boy over here, Jack Eichel, for my first centerman position. Nice steal. Uh, I'm absolutely – I know this is a small league. There's only 10 teams in this mock draft, but mm-hmm. Jack Eichel, Timmy Stutzla, Nikita Kucherov, Kale McCarr, and, and Connor Hellebuck is a great start. To the fifth round uh for all for the first five rounds of this mock draft you can't help but like it but this is again <laughs> what happens when we have what how many people actually your team this? your team's always going to be loaded with 10 team leagues it's gonna look good that's for sure but i think that's one of those things that i've been a victim of steel in these situations is starting to load up too much on guys that i like and yeah. not focusing on the balance of my team and i think that's one of the main things i wanted to come on to today's episode while we do this and this is fast and furious and we are going to do a whole bunch more mock drafts so make sure you keep it tuned and tapped and steal i'm gonna have to squeeze in an ad read here right after my next pick if you're good with that but it's just trying to stay focused and remember you got to bring balance to your entire team Know the categories in your league. This one is very standard 
and that's how you dominate your draft. Balance out your team. Don't forget about the Cats. And it is Steel on the board in the sixth round here. And how do we feel about Connor Bedard being ranked 37th for the expert preseason ranks? A lot of people are already passing up on him. We're at the 53rd, 53rd spot right now. And I'm actually going to go to Zach Hyman over here. One of those okay. uh, workhorse forwards who does a lot of the dirty work, but goes mm-hmm. hard to the net, gets those rebounds, gets a ton of shots on net. And of course, playing with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl on that top line is, uh, is an A-plus for him as well. Yeah, if he does stay there, a lot of people predicting that Connor Brown might get a shot, but I think Zach Hyman is probably the most likely piece to actually... Well, Zach Hyman, Zach Hyman's on the left wing and Connor Brown's on the right wing, so they could be playing together on that top line with McDavid. They could be. Sorry, I thought you said with Dreisaitl and McDavid on that top line, so maybe the top power play, but yep. things are going to shake out very differently from now until puck drops, so we're going to keep our eyes tapped steel very quickly. I'm on the board six round. The goalie market is getting thin, and there's a guy that I want on my team this year, and I might be reaching on both of these guys, but I'm sticking to my guns. We get a whole lot of value out of Stuart Skinner, and I want him as my second goalie on my team. Yeah, I I figured you would be targeting him at some point in this draft, probably for that second goalie position of yours. Um, But yeah, uh, you know, definitely had it last year. Uh, really stepped out and took over control of that crease for the Edmonton Oilers yep. after Jake uh, after Jack Campbell really stumbled uh, stumbled what seemed to be a very good opportunity for him in Edmonton. I agree, and we're going to get to the rest of the draft, including my seventh round draft pick. That is not going to be another goalie, my friends. I'm going to probably <laughs> be addressing my blue line with this pick. That's coming up in a very hot minute, but you know we got to pay these bills. In the meantime, we have to get to our friends at Bird Dog. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs make you look cool. Bird Dog stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leave your leg giving a truly sculpted look. They fit way better than regular shorts that are made of stiff, restricting cotton. Steele and I have been absolutely loving our Bird Dogs, and you won't (laughs) want to take them off. We know this and you got to be checking out bird dogs from the course to the clubhouse you're going to be loving it go to birddogs.com slash locked on nhl or enter promo code locked on nhl for a free bird dogs water bottle with your order that's birddogs.com slash locked on nhl for a free water bottle at checkout you won't want to take your bird dogs off we promise you steal my last pick very quickly i did go to the blue line i snagged miguel sergachev who did you snag? You're on the board again. This is when it's getting intense, baby. I went over to Victor Hedman. You know how I like to pair those forwards with the defensemen. So I've got Nikita Kucherov and mm-hmm. Victor Hedman. I'm now back up on the board. I think I'm going to take a centerman position. And Alexander Barkov, wow, I can't believe he fell all the way down to the eighth round. I, like I will that. scoop him up immediately. I love my team right now. Yeah, it, hey, I think this is also one of those classic cases, Steel, that it's our first mock draft and we're just so hyped. (laughs) Looking at my team, I'm loving it too. McKinnon, Pedersen, Marner, Darlene, Sergachev, Gustafson, and Skinner. By the way, were you going after Sergachev? Did I snipe him off your table or you were just looking for either Hedman or Sergachev? I was looking for either one. Uh, I was also looking at Miro Heiskanen. I was going to take him over Hedman, but he was taking a couple of picks before mine. Uh, So it was either going to be Sergachev, Hedman, or or uh, Miro Heiskanen, but both of those players got snagged up right before me. So there was a lot of pieces just on the board there, and I think the LA Kings are one of those teams, Steel, that I can't come on this show and talk about how much I like their offensive output and balanced attack (laughs) and not get myself at least one piece. I think Pierre-Luc Dubois, we know what the issues have been. We know we don't love his attitude a lot, but we know he can be an elite fantasy piece. And I think this change of scenery is going to give him that kick in the pants that he needs. So my centermen are locked up. I got one left ring. I got one right wing. I got two D. I think I want to go back to my D-man here, Steele. And then I want your take on what you think about getting that backup goaltender. We'll talk about that after your next pick, because I do think there's something to be said about getting one or two guys that you really like and then making sure you do have some sort of security blanket. I know that burns one of your positional backup spots, but yeah. usually in most leagues, you're going to have room for at least one goaltender who's not your starting two. So I think that's something I want to talk to you about. Aaron Ekblad, Alex Petrangelo, Drew Doughty, Vince Dunn, Darnell Nurse on this board steal, and Devin Taves. But you know what? 
You and I have talked a lot about this player and Darnell Nurse. We both like him. He brings the body. He can bring some offensive output. And I want to start filling out some of these peripheral categories. 150, 146 body hits last year. I'll take him right now. Ninth round, by the way. That was also probably going to be my next pick as well. Again, trying to pair up a defenseman with a forward. Zach Hyman and Darnell Nurse is uh, no joke. John Carlson going 85th overall. I'm a little bit surprised with Matt Zuccarello and how high he went. Even Sergey Bobrovsky, 87th overall on this board. Um, a little bit that. early in my in my opinion, but hey, it hey. is what it is for that player, and uh, he's probably going to be at the bottom of the leaderboard when when this mock draft is over. I'm on the clock right now. I'm looking for a defenseman. And again, I think I'm going to pair up another forward with a defenseman. I'm going to go with Alex Petrangelo, pairing him up with Jack Eichel. I really like my group right now. Again, it's only 10 teams in this mock draft right yeah. now. It's, your, your team's going to be absolutely loaded every single time. But 11 goals, 43 assists last year. He gets the he gets the shots on net. He gets the blocks. He gets the hits. I'm back up on back the clock. Up. And I think this is when I'm going to take my second goaltender. It's yeah. between Tristan Jari. Ooh. It's most likely going to be Tristan Jari. Do I go with Devin Levi? No, I'm going to go with Whoa. Tristan Jari. I yeah. think he's going to be fully ready, fully yes. healthy and ready to go this next season. And again, he's got a, a little bit of a boost in front of him now. That would have been just a bit too early for me, Steele. And I know there's going to be a lot of people wanting to jump on Devin Levi. And I totally understand, especially <laughs> in the Keeper Dynasty side of things. He should be much, much higher up the board than we're now in the 10th round. I'm on the board. I'm looking to fill out my last starting left wing and right wing position. I got Kreider, Kane, Buchnevich, Jonathan Huberdeau for a lot of people who are expecting a bounce back. There's a number of really intriguing names here, Steele. And I think there's someone I can wait on in a second. I'm going to go with a player that I think is going to bounce back in a very big way. And Johnny Boudreau. Well, I missed it. And look at that, Steele. Who did I get instead? Chris Kreider. That's not who I was going for. <laughs> I wanted to go with Johnny Goudreau because I Flip, like you're back on the on clock the right now. Blue jackets. And I'm back on the board, baby. I'm going over <laughs> to my this right. Is a wing very, position. very fast mock draft. We're having it is. And I'm going to go to the right wing position, but I hope you like my take on Johnny Goudreau because I do I think do. there's a ton of value there for him. And I do think that team is going to be a whole lot better. Hit me with my boy, Ricard Raquel. I'm going to go with you on this one. Steel. I think he's going to have a big come-up season. I think so as well. I, I was very impressed. That might have been him. a bit early for him, by the way. It may have been, but I was fairly impressed with him last year. He had 60-plus points. The shots were up. The hits were up. The power play points were up for him. Uh, and again, playing on that top line, playing on that top line with Sidney Crosby, and of course, when Jake Gensel comes Well, back. that's just it. Yeah. And a better power play as well. And let me leave it at this before your pick is back up here. In the 11th round is looking at this right wing position, Steel. A lot of question marks, injuries, Tarasenko, Nishushkin, Tom Wilson, Brian Rust, Jordan Eberle. The right wing position is a little shallow, I would say, headed into this year. So maybe that's something we can talk about in another episode. It might have to because I'm a little nervous again going into this into this draft or this pick right now. But I'm actually yeah. going to take a chance, even though he's injured. I'm going to go with Andre Svechnikov. I've talked about him yes. a lot. Again, when he's fully healthy, I really do believe he is the heart of the Carolina Hurricanes. I know Sebastian Ajo has got all the talent. He's got the scoring ability. But Svechnikov brings the boom. He brings the hits. He brings yeah. the power play points. He brings the penalties as well. He's a banger league beauty. I really do like Andre Sveshnikov. I am now back up on the clock. I'm going to a defenseman because I've got all of my forwards taken right now. Yep. I'm actually going to go with Jacob Truba. Mm, mm, I'm going to okay. go with Jacob Truba just for those peripheral stats. He gets a ton of hits, a ton of blocks, and even the points were a lot better than I expected as well. Yeah, he's one of those guys, Steel, that for some reason, and I saw, hey, by the way, everyone commenting on the YouTube channel today in the DM, shout out to everybody. You can tell, Steel, that people are getting fired up, <laughs> but I'm actually not here for this hate on the New York Rangers blue line that I've been seeing. I everyone's know. ready. Everyone's ready to put the title on other blue lines. Let's not forget that this squad a couple of years ago was right there as a Stanley Cup threat, and I think they still are, and there's a name up word that I really want to take off of it and just because we're talking about the New York Rangers I'm going to snipe him up right now as my last defenseman starting defenseman and this is only because of how high on him you have Mackenzie Weger there Jacob Chikrin Morgan Riley Adam Larson Radko Gudis is ranked higher than Keandre Miller that doesn't make sense Keandre Miller is my fourth 
final starting defenseman steal. I like that as well. We were talking about him last, on last week's episode, mm-hmm. uh, the growth and development that he showed, especially last year, jumping up into the bl- into the play, getting into the physicality of the game as well that we didn't really see in the first couple of years he was in the NHL. He's a big guy. He is a very big guy with a lot of weight on him, and he's got a very powerful shot on that blue line. So I expect him again to continue mm-hmm. to develop and grow. Uh, moving forward so I was just up on the board very quickly the 13th round this is moving quickly I mentioned that ability to have a security blanket of a third goaltender even if they're going to get the lion's share Aiden Hill is probably going to get a majority of the starts in net at least to start the year so I'm happy to have my third goaltender be arguably a number one starter on a really good team I don't think that's going to happen in most league steel. He's probably going to be sniped up by now with along with a lot of other number ones. But if you can get a number one this yeah. late in the draft as your third goalie, I love that option for injuries and for poor starts, but you're back up here round 13. Where are you looking? I think we're going to have to, I'm, I'm going to have to go to our boy over here, Joe Pavelski, the 50 year old, just kidding. 38 year old uh, Joe Pavelski centerman. Uh, I want to get another centerman on the, on my bench right now. Mm-hmm. 26 goals, 42 assists, plus 26, 190 okay. shots okay. for a 38 year old to have close to a hundred hits. Very mm-hmm. impressive. So I'm going to go with Joe Pavelski for my third center position, but he's on my bench right now. Yeah, and you're going to be back up on the clock. Now we're starting to look at this point of the draft, though, Steele. Who is the best players left, and how does your lineup need to be addressed? Go ahead with your round 14 selection. I think it's going to have to be Evander Kane. He's felt he's fallen all the way to the 14th round here. I saw uh, that. You know, 16 goals, uh, 12 assists last year, obviously had, uh, you know, scary injury and has dealt with injuries the last few years. But when he's fully healthy, he's a beast. Obviously, a Bangor League beauty gets the shots, gets the hits, gets the penalty minutes uh, to get Evander Kane in the 14th round. I know it's only a 10 team league. Yeah. Um, but even to get him in the 14th round, I think that's a, 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 a very successful pick. Yeah, he's also, when he is on his game and if he can stay healthy, regardless of where he's deployed, because now there are some other options there for the Edmonton Oilers in their top six, top nine group, he's still going to be an important piece. And he is, Mm -hmm. when he's playing, like, remember, he put I think he led the NHL in goals scored two playoffs ago. So we know he can bring it. He's that prototypical power forward, banger league beauty. (laughs) And one of those guys that steal could be the difference for you because he has a fight a bad penalty or two and a goal and an assist. That's like 20 fantasy points and you might be up the leaderboard very quickly. Now that I have three spots left on my bench steal, I have a backup goaltender. I want to go winger centerman and demon. So I have backups and my backup centerman who hasn't been drafted yet for some reason, maybe because of how shallow this league is. I'm taking a shot on Maddie Beneers for sure as my oh, wow. Backup. Yeah, I don't hate it. I'm a little surprised. I'm a little surprised with a couple of other guys on this list, but I don't hate the pick whatsoever. Um, Matty Beniers, David Perron, Jordan Everly, Jake DeBrus, Troy Terry, Anders Lee, and Darcy Kemper go right after that. But mm-hmm. but but why do you why are you taking Matty Beniers at number 15 again? So I think given that I do need a backup centerman and he has such a high ceiling and elite level talent that probably should have been drafted already. I love the ability if Nathan McKinnon or Pedersen goes down that I can swap him in and he can probably still not carry the offensive load that those two guys bring, but it might actually still keep you in the business and shot at a top three spot because of how good I think both you and I think he should be this year. Mm -hmm. I did just snag Nikolai Ehlers as my backup left winger because I do still think the top six in Winnipeg are going to score a lot of goals. I think so as well. The top six, especially again, there's been a couple of rumors out there still uh, nothing of concrete, uh, you know, know, nothing of concrete circumstance though, with those rumors from the Winnipeg jets. Uh, I am also on the clock right now. I'm actually going to pick up a defenseman and I'm going to go with Jake Sanderson, unless he's been taken already. Oh, he's there. Uh, Am I missing? Oh, there he is. Let me snag him up real quick. Again, one of those players that was very overlooked and uh, Mm -hmm. underrated in last year's regular season, but Mm -hmm. he's a great young defenseman in his rookie year. I think he's going to be great moving forward for the Ottawa Senators. Totally agree, pal. And you're back up on the board. Let's finish this draft off. We'll give some analysis and thoughts. Maybe we even throw to a second break. I don't (laughs) even know what we're doing here, baby. We're going fast and furious, but we will be back with more mock draft steel. Your last pick of the draft, round 16. Who is it?
Things are absolutely flying right now, but I'm going to go with Tom Wilson for the from the Washington Capitals to wrap things up here for my team. I'm looking for a little bit of grit. I love getting grit at the back end of the draft. And we'll talk about this in a second once this draft is over, but I think that this is one of those situations, especially in deeper leagues where less fantasy studs are still on the yeah. board because there's still some pieces here, Steel. Noah Hannafin, Jacob Chikrin, Shea Theodore, uh, Bowen Byram, Philip Ronek. There are still, and I'm talking about just the blue line because that's where I want to go. So this is one of those kinds of angles that remember if your league is a lot deeper, you're not going to have this, you know, options for these amazing kinds of pieces that are still left and you're gonna have to do yeah. the trenches but i want some more grit and i want some hits i want some you know some snot steel and i think there's one thing we can say about luke shen is he's gonna yeah. bring that no matter what and yeah his offensive numbers won't be there but i'm loaded up on offensive talent and luke shen is i think one of the top three hit leaders in the last three le- years he has been yes I'll take Luke Shen as my final backup defenseman. That's a wrap on the draft steal. It was fast and furious. Do you want to throw it a break and come back? Or should we just wrap this bad boy up with a quick little breakdown of how we think our draft went? I think we just wrap things up right now with Love how it. the draft went. Uh, I'll, I'll start off with my team. Yeah, hit me. First, you know, I'll, I'll go from down from center to left wing. Jack Eichel, Alexander Barkov, Timmy Stutzla, Zach Hyman, Nikita Kucherov, Andre Svechnikov, Kale McCarr, Victor Hedman, Alex Petrangelo, Jacob Truba, Connor Hellebuck, Tristan Jari, Joe Pavelski, Evander Kane, Jake Sanderson, and Tom Wilson. So I did get a little, I got a little bit of grit on my bench as well with Tom Wilson and Evander Kane taking a taking a a shot on two guys who were injured last year uh, with scary injuries. So getting some grit on the line but again those those first five six picks that that i made uh absolutely love my team right now yeah and i'm realizing here as i look at my lineup which is nathan mckinnon and Pedersen at center dubois and Kreider at left wing Kreider wasn't the guy i was going after so let's <laughs> take that with a grain of salt mitchy marner at right wing ricard raquel i think i took a little bit too early steel i believe i took him right around the ninth round I think given how loaded this draft was, I probably could have waited another round or two. I don't hate the pick knowing that we both expect a bit of a offensive boost from what Eric Carlson will bring here. And we know he's got that top right wing position locked down with Sid. So that's something that I really wanted to actually pair him with Sidney Crosby. I got pooched on that one too, but I love that angle of pairing. Then I got Mitch Marner as well on the right wing. And I actually love my blue line. Rasmus Dahlin, Mikhail Sergachev, Darnell Nurse, and Keandre Miller are my four blue liners. I'm loving the balance. that Those four are going to bring hits. They're going to bring pims, block shots, and points. Gustafson and Skinner, the ceiling is high, but I'm worried already, <laughs> Steele, because you know what I think about that Minnesota team? I think they're going to be in a dogfight for that third position. I still think they're one of the top teams in the Central. And yep. my bench, Veneers, Ehlers, Aiden Hill, and Luke Shen, I might be throwing Aiden and Aiden Hill in that mix, though, Steele, if Mark andre Fleury starts taking some share of time in Minnesota. What do you think about that take? I, I like the take as well. Again, you know, you're definitely taking a flyer on Philip yep. Gustafson and yep. uh, Stuart Skinner, two young guys who are now just becoming into that starting role for their, for their respective club. Um, but yeah, throwing in Aiden Hill in there potentially. And this is the thing about 10 team leagues is look at all the players still left on the board. Elias Lindholm, yeah. Martin Nakash, Anze Kopitar, Philip Forsberg, Valeri Nachushkin, again, right. Logan Thompson, Nate Nazem Kach, Sam Bennett being one of them, Jakob Chikrin. So Morgan Riley mm-hmm. as well, Mark Shifley, the list continues to go on. Long so just because, players. just because uh, your team, w- you know, is most likely going to be stacked in a 10 team league. If it doesn't pan out right away with the player, there's going to be a ton of options still on the waiver wire every single Monday. Make sure you're tuning in. Uh, and again, 10 team leagues, your team's most likely going to be stacked if you're if you're drafting properly. And I actually think that is one of the key takeaways for if your league is a little bit more shallow, you're going to probably, and you start off slowly, I would be a lot more inclined to hit that waiver wire and yeah. start digging in. Whereas 
I think you might want to stick to your guns a little bit more in a deeper league. See how your team shakes out after a week, two, three, maybe even give it one month before you start hitting the waiver wire too heavily. Obviously, injuries, you're going to have to go to the waiver wire. But you know what I mean here, Steele. If your team's not performing in a real deep league and there's not better options, you probably want to just wait and see what happens. Whereas these more shallow leagues like we just had, and there's all those pieces that you just mentioned still out there and your guys aren't performing, Maybe you head to the waiver wire a little bit earlier than not, but either way, you're going to want to be tuned and tapped into all of our waiver wire Monday episodes. And over the next five weeks, all of our mock draft Monday episodes. And let's not forget steal very quickly. Another plug for the listener league. September 20th is the cutoff. steel has been on fire in the DM. Shout out to steel. Make sure you hit us with your email, your full name, what league you want to be a part of, and you drop a five-star review, Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen, and like and subscribe to the channel. Steel, do I have that all covered or what? Intense we have episode. it all covered. A very fast-paced episode. Like you said, fast and furious. We appreciate all that love and support you show us every single day. Again, like Flip said, mock drafts every single Monday. We may have to split them up into part one and part two so we can get a little bit more in-depth analysis going for you guys yep. out there but this again this was a 10 team league very fast paced things go very very fast in, in this in this sort of league in this sort of format as well but both flip and i very much like our teams after this first mock draft again we're going to continue to throw out some polls out there uh over the next couple of days we already got the uh, the format or the platform locked down we will be drafting uh on yahoo but again, more polls will be coming out very, very soon in the next week. And just thank you guys so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the follow button. We appreciate you guys. And thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your summer bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.